In today's presentation, we are going to be talking about the maintaining cleanliness of sports turf, maintenance machinery and the equipment. So this can be anything from the machine itself. So we've got the picture of the mower here on the right with the grass on it, scarifier, um, but also any sort of work areas, um, whether that's mess rooms, um, any sort of facility rooms uh, and any storage areas that we may contain anything that we need to complete our jobs. So the learning objectives for today, we want you to understand the importance of uh, maintaining cleanliness uh, in the sports turf maintenance sector. So again, like I say, this can be anything from the mower to the mess room. Uh, we want to learn about the materials, the tools and the equipment that we are using and understand why different ones may be needed to be cleaned in different ways. We want to build on this and develop the skills for preparing the machinery and the equipment safely and effectively. So this would be pre-start checks, post-start checks uh, and the importance of making sure that the machine is clean for the next user. Embrace the behaviour and taking ownership of your work. This is a big thing because the more you care about the, the practices and the ways you work, the better you will clean that the machine and have it prepared for the next person. Uh, and if anything, it's just a bit of pride for yourself. So as part of the sports turf apprenticeships in the UK, duty six is to maintain the cleanliness of machinery, equipment, sports ground and the work areas. Um, so we want to cover the legal and regulatory requirements. First of all, as you can see on the right, we've got the little picture of the the uh, little fishy that's died uh, and the tree that's died because of uh, a potential uh, contamination. So some of the uh, acts and regulations that are in place for when washing down machinery. We have the Environmental Protection Act 1990. Uh, we have the Water Resources Act 1991, the Environmental Permitting uh, Regulations 2016, uh, Environmental Protection. This is the microbees, so the plastics regulations to uh, 2017, uh, Health and Safety at Work Act uh, 1974, which always comes up in every scenario, no matter what. So the Pollution Prevention and Control, PPC regulations and Waste Regulations 2011. We also have the control of substances hazardous to health. Uh, and this is a big one when using machinery, because obviously we've got fuel, we've got oils, uh, we've got batteries with potential acid in, and um, any sort of line markers or any sort of equipment like that. We also cover spray equipment uh, within sports turf. So there is the potential for contamination in that regards as well. This is not an extensive list. Uh, there is more, um, but these are the main ones that you want to be highlighting. So why cleanliness matters? Obviously, um, some of the big things are to make it look visually appealing, um, but actually it does have more of a deeper meaning. Um, in regards to turf and plant health, um, what we can be doing here is avoiding any sort of contamination. So an easy one to spray it. Uh, if we've not cleaned it out properly, we've been using it on a for a pesticide or a, any sort of weed killer, and we uh, on a bare area, for example, and then now, afterwards we've um, then gone and sprayed a field and it hasn't been cleaned properly, and we put fertilizer through the machine. There's a potential for some contamination, and uh, we could potentially kill off some grass. Uh, but not only that. For example, uh, mowers are a big one, and not a lot of people talk about this, but people leaving clippings. Uh, on the underside of mowers, there's potential for that to sit in a warm, dry cupboard, uh, you know, sort of rot away, start to build up diseases and things on those and spores on the, that leaf and matter that's in de debris that's been, uh, it's still stuck to the bottom of the mower. And next time you go out and mow, there's the opportunity that, that could then fall off uh, and start to spread spores and diseases across your sports turf surface. Obviously, safety is a big thing as well. Um, we want to ensure that the machinery is ready for the next user. So uh, a big thing would be a uh, cylinder mower. Uh, the next person can't really set it up properly without it being cleaned prior. Uh, and you want the, the cylinder to be dry when they're checking the cup, for example. So they don't want to have to clean it before they use it. Can be other things such as fire safety. If you've got a machine where it's got 
uh, a lot of grass clippings covering any sort of vents um, which may cause the machine to overheat uh, that can then obviously have some safety implications as well uh, and then we want to ensure that the uh, equipment is efficient and performing correctly. So again, something like the overheating, uh, that's downtown for a machine, that's time that the machine is not cutting grass um, and that could cause you issues within your workplace. So neglecting cleanliness can lead to poor playing conditions and increased maintenance costs because of these things I've spoke about. So what are the best Practices for cleaning, um, regular cleaning schedules, really important. Um, even if a machine's not being used, consider, you know, it's it's dusty in a shed. The, there might be other things about, there might be grass clippings on the floor if you, you're working in the southern hemisphere of cricket. Uh, you know, those sort of things. Can we get the machine out once a year during the winter or something if it's not being used and just give it a once over, uh, just an extra clean, you know, grease it well with air sort of thing proper waste disposal so we don't just want to be leaving grass in mower boxes overnight it causes a smell as I mentioned it can cause uh, potential places for disease to start to grow as well and also pests you know we might get some animals and some rats coming and think that that was uh, their habitat and decide to live within that mower box over the weekend um, but ensuring that we dispose of that waste correctly we're composting it we're recycling it uh, where possible um, not obviously everything can be uh, recycled or compost um, but ensuring that it's not just being tipped or dumped in any sort of manner lubrication and maintenance comes into it as well so when we're cleaning machinery after it we should make sure that we are trying as best to maintain it as well um, you know if there's potentially being any sort of water ingress or anything like that in any bearings if we then go and put some grease in it we know there's a possibility that we might to uh we, that we might just push some of that grease out and uh, save ourselves a bearing uh push some of that water out should i say and it's a good time to inspect for wear and tear if we've cleared any sort of chlorophyll off blade for example on a cylinder mower we can then see uh, is there any potential cracks? Is there any damages or any chips? Um, just one small scenario, but there could be many other places where there might be damage, which we might have not otherwise seen because of um, there was dirt and de debris in the way. And a big thing is to follow the manufacturer's guidance in the manual to tell you exactly when they expect you to clean it and sort of what standard. Usually it's after every single use, depending on the machine. So leaf blowers, you could probably go a little bit more. Um, but I always try and, you know, give it a squirt of water or a, 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 a clean off with a, a wet rag or something or some tissues, uh, whereas your, your lawnmower will most definitely be every time you've used it. Uh, electrical powered equipment is slightly different. You might not want to use a jet wash on that. It's not advised. You probably want to get a uh, some soapy water and a, a brush and scrub it. Uh, remove any bigger bits first, but then do that afterwards uh, and then dry clean it before you put it away for storage. So as usual, personal protective equipment, PP is always recommended. Um, if we doing any sort of sports turf uh, maintenance, we should be wearing the correct PP for that job. So it's usually boots, uh, ear defenders, any sort of respiratory equipment, uh, gloves is a big one. Um, but when we're washing down machinery, you know, if we're using potentially using chemicals to wash down machinery or it's already had chemicals within it, we should be considering wearing things like eye masks, uh, eye goggles or any sort of face shields as well. Uh, it's really important that we do that. So as I mentioned, it's not just the machinery as well. It's the cleaning of work areas. Um, this is a one of the tool sheds that I've worked in in the past. Um, as you can see, there's quite a few things dotted about. There's things on the floor, there's a mower deck, there's tools. Um, you know, should, we need to be keeping walkways clear. Have chemicals being stored away? Are areas well lit? Can you see where you're going? Um, it's all part of the sort of cleanliness circle uh, and to ensuring that we're providing a safe workplace for not just ourselves, but also our co-workers, members of the public and any sort of visitors. So we have the safety considerations as well. It's we should keep up to date with our records and those sort of things. And there's so many various different things, but we need to do this to ensure that we're, we're doing this for the safety of our staff and the public. Um, but also there's going to be times where we might have inspectors come 
uh, and we need to ensure that we're we're carrying out those procedures properly and we need to demonstrate that as well so the use of P the proper ppe um the maintenance specific safety measures so that they will be highlighted in the manual and then first aid and emergency procedures it might sound a bit daft but for example using a waste to water uh, system we need to have that like, water regulations and those sort of things in place as well uh, and any sort of safety around that to ensure that we are ticking all of the boxes